Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Okay, so first I want to just apologise for not having a video out for six months. And this isn't even a proper video, this is just like a, an update, just so you can see where we're at with this hoverboard tank. So, this is like probably about a week after the last video that I uploaded. So as you can see, we got 3D printed tracks on the tank. And yeah, they just come apart. So those tracks I think they take about probably close to an hour for each section and I think there's like 40 sections per per side so you can imagine how much time and how much time I put into printed those and how much filament it used up as well um, easily like two or three rolls so anyway I decided to go against them and try using a chain instead so I reprinted all the drive wheels um, that was a little bit of messing about trying to get the pitch right to match the chain but after a couple of attempts it turned out alright so these things on the wheels um, they're just slid over so you have to obviously disassemble the motor well just take off the back panel and then slide these new parts over the top and then put the back panel back on right so you can see it's um, these ones are pretty robust these, these metal chains they're, they're never going to break well n not not before other things break. <clears throat> so yeah, we took it out for a spin down the beach, uh, going over stones and stuff, no problem. So I just wanted to see just what it was capable of, so we got some big rocks, try and drive over them. Um, you can kind of notice that because there's no support in the middle of the track, um, anything that goes in the middle just kind of tensions it really tight. So what was happening in the front, where the front rollers are, um, with all the tension there, getting forced to bend backwards. So what I've done since then, I've drilled straight through the um, through that extruded frame and then bolted the wheels there so that they're not going to move. <coughs> the back wheels, they're held on pretty tight. Um, they got four M6 bolts on each side, so they're pretty solid. So the actual chassis, that's kind of the same as it was before. That's just the high speed test outside, it seems pretty good. Right, so this is testing out with a with an onboard camera using FaceTime. So we got um, two iPhones, one's on the tank, one was in my hand, and then it drives like that. There wasn't much lag, so it was pretty good. Right, this is a turret. Um, I was running out of ideas for things to put on top, so I started designing a turret a couple of years ago, and I got back into that and redesigned it and made it a lot better. So this is the section that goes on the turret, and this is to hold an arm that can move up and down. So it'll have the left, right, up, down, pan and tilt, basically. So we've got bearings in there. You see the cables coming out the front, which is not ideal. Um, but yeah, as you can see now, the cables, the cables hiding. Uh, what it is, it's going through the middle. So I can spin this round. You know, we can get, it can probably go three or four times all the way around, with it being okay. <coughs> right. So yeah, this is just like trying out different stuff. I'm um, just trying to get ideas for different, like, I, I, was, I wanted to put a gun on it, but probably best not. So yeah, I've just got this thing that looks like a gun, and it's just a, like a laser emitter. And it's not particularly good, but it's okay. Alright, so as well you can see, um, there was a couple of speed controllers. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I've used from the hoverboard car in this project. Alright, so this is like actually designing a nice gun for it now. So um, yeah, inspiration based on the paintball gun. And as you can see here as well, we've got some smooth motion, which is uh, thanks to um, using speed controllers for the motor instead of just on and off. So we're using PWM from an Arduino to control that. Um, obviously PlayStation controller with the analog sticks. And here we've got a green laser. So we're just sort of showing how the, the toe on top can move really slowly and smoothly. Um, because they've got potentiometers on it, I think I could probably set it to um, look at targets and stuff. Uh, well, more more into that after. Right, so a bit of a change in sound. I'm just recording straight off my phone now. Um, right, so this is where we are today. So it's currently 23rd of December, and this is the tank as it is. So the first thing you probably notice is it's got a different gun on top. Right, um, this one actually encases a BB gun. Um, there's like a little one from a, one of these little um, model radio control tanks. <clears throat> I managed to put one inside there. You can probably just about see some of it. Um, but yeah, it's 
it's not very powerful. Um, I've tried making other guns using like a spinning wheel and then have the BBs fall down. Um, I got a big pile of, uh, there you go. these are all gun parts where I've been trying to make a gun. So there's going to be a, there's going to be, uh, um, there's going to be a, um, a gun attachment video for this because it's getting into, well, okay, I'll just show you now. This is the next gun that's going on. So this is from a, well, it's a spare part for a Uzi, uh, airsoft Uzi. So I think it's got like a, it's well over 100, 200, um, BB's a minute fire rate, so it's quite fast. It's also quite powerful. And then we got the stainless steel narrow barrel as well, so that's going to go on. So that's going to be inside this here. I'm just going to have to redesign it a little bit. Um, we've got the green laser just temporarily mounted on there. Right, so we'll just go quickly through the, um, the electronics. Right, so at the bottom, can we see? No, we can't see, right. So we got a Arduino Mega at the bottom, which has a USB shield and a sensor shield. So that's connected to a Arduino Uno, which is here. Um, at the moment, this doesn't do anything. Um, all it's doing is connecting everything together. So I've got all these spare pins here and all them spare pins there. Um, this Nano here, this has just got one job at the moment, and that is to control this um, infrared transmitter, which is connected to the infrared receiver for this LED light strip in front. So instead of like trying to hack into the controls for this um, LED strip, we're actually hacked in to replace the remote. So I can still use the remote with it, but the, it can control itself as well. So like. Say if I've got other sets of these things, um, these LED strips, as a tank's driving past, it'll be able to control these other LED strips itself. <clears throat> okay, so relays. Right, we've got four relays here. Um, relay one just activates this spotlight on, on the front. Relay two is connected to the green laser because the Arduino is not powerful enough to just run it itself, like from a digital pin. And relay three, is connected to the gun. So what I've just done, I've, I've tied in, in the code, so when you press the button, it does the laser and the gun at the same time. Right, so I'll just power it up and give you a quick demonstration of how it is at this point in time. Okay, so a standard PS4 controller. Right, oh yeah, that's connected up good. And then we've got this switch over here which is for main power. Okay, so as soon as we turn on the power, LED at the front lights up, like it's like a neutral blue color. So, again, analog stick, do, 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 turn in the turret. So it's, it's quite cool. I mean, it's got a lot of power as well. Um, let's go into it quickly. You can see it's got ball bearings at the bottom. Uh, this thing can support a lot of weight. I haven't tested it to the point of breaking um, for how much weight we can put on it, but it's a lot. I designed it originally so that it would be able to support something like, uh, where was it? Something like this, this paintball gun. You know, one day I might actually have a paintball gun on this, but we'll see, one step at a time. Right, so yeah, toad movement, and like there, and then obviously, up and down. Right, so what I've done is I've uh, software restricted the movement. So it's got a potentiometer and you can only go up to the limit. I mean, obviously I can set it so it does more, but for reasons like that, I can only go so far down and then obviously so far up else it'll just fall off. Um, directions, what I've done, I've just made it so that it can do 360 and obviously finish at the back. So I could make it do more, but that's all I want it to do. It's, it's safe, other people can play on it and they can't spin it around too many times and wreck it. Uh, right, so laser. Um, L1 for laser, that's the laser, laser lights up. As you can see, looks quite cool. Green laser's pretty good, you can see the beam better. I mean, it's a little bit dark. I mean, sorry, it's a little bit too light to see a laser today. But generally it's pretty good. 
And then obviously when you press the laser, it turns the LEDs red at the front. Uh, I just want to mention as well that the gun is currently disconnected. So that's why you can't hear any firing. It's not really fast, it's like and it's not even that powerful either, so. Um, it was just mostly like just trying to get it to work. Right, so that's it for this for now. Um, I was gonna try and hang on until I've like made a load of nice body panels for it, just to cover stuff up, like little pieces like that, to just go over it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, cause I'm keep changing stuff and just end up wasting plastic doing things like that. So I think what I'll do, I'll keep it at, as like a prototype for a little while longer. And then maybe in like a month or two, I'm going to be extending the chassis um, probably to about, probably to about there, um, just to give me all the more space. So all these things on the top, they can all be stuck in the bottom out of the way. Um, there'll be more of a, like a square kind of solid frame instead of like a triangle rampy sort of shape. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously going to have to buy more chain, a couple more connections just to sort of, just to be able to extend this out. Um, so yeah, probably all in parts, it's going to cost about another, maybe another 50 quid just to sort of upgrade it. But then after doing that, obviously all the electrics will be inside, it'll be all covered up and it'll look a lot better then as well. Um, okay, so that's it for this one. And you know, if you want to keep up with updates for this, obviously I'm going to try and post more videos. Um, I wasn't planning on leaving it this long between videos, but um, it's, it's a weird project this one, like it just seems to be ongoing forever. Well, not forever, like not as bad as the hoverboard car, but I mean, I wanted to try and get it to a certain point before making a video and it's just taking too long. And I got a lot of other stuff doing as well. Um, I do have another channel as well that I've been working on, but there's not many stuff on, many things on there. That's called um, Los Santos Production Studios. So if any of you like GTA videos, GTA heists, check them out. Um, yeah, so obviously, if you want to see more, like, subscribe. And that's it for now. For, um, have a good Christmas and a Happy New Year.